So here we are at another Y6, or refer to maintenance call. Um, so apparently this tap here is dead. So apparently the power company cut us um, not too long ago. Favorite part of the job now, which is digging. So I'm gonna expose this cable and get back with you guys. Okay, so I have dug a little trench here as you can see. I might try to deepen it before I actually put it in the ground, but I'm just gonna go ahead and complete the splice and show you guys what that's like um so i have this is all 500 cable looks like i went to the truck and grabbed a piece of uh good 500 so i can use a straight splice which is what this is a little dirt in it um if i didn't have any 500 i'd use some other type of cable probably six and a quarter 625 and use a kiss splice instead of that but if you're using the same types of cable you can just use a straight splice which is what's preferred so basically you just want to make sure because a lot of times whenever cable gets damaged on a dig you can kind of see here hopefully that it's sort of flat right so you just want to cut back um, you know similarly to how you would if you were just digging like uh, or repairing like a normal I don't know underground 11 drop nearest the point of uh, damage it's typically damaged further back so just want to make sure that you've got no uh, cuts in the jacket and no other sort of uh, physical impairments. Then you want to take your handy dandy banana cutters. Definitely not um, linemen's for hard line cable. And cut back to where there is no damage. So I'm going to cut like right there. And same thing on the other side. So, and this is actually pretty preserved, so probably good to cut right here. Now for the fun part. So you wanna skin this back uh, to expose the shield. try to damage it none if possible uh, by the way there shouldn't be any voltage on this cable because this is a terminating run so should be good to go in that aspect. Just cut it all back. Cool. So, especially when you've got like finite cable to work with, which we have here, um, you want to probably go ahead and cut a little piece out at the end right here to expose the center conductor which I just cut <laughs> so yeah uh, make sure not to do that expose that just like that you want to probably want to do that especially when you first start coring because it's easy to um, if you don't do that to get the center conductor uh, on the inside or on the outside of that coring tool and just screw that center conductor all up and then suddenly you've got a lot less cable to work with if you don't catch yourself in time. So as you can see the center conductor is inside the center of the coring tool. And that is the end result. So let me grab these over here. That one there. So on these splices are, um, and on housings, on connectors, on just about anything maintenance, there is there are always uh, reference points to cut these little uh, divots. So that's where you want to cut the center conductor to. You want to cut it at the bottom of the threads, not at the O-ring. Okay. 
So this one is obviously a little too long. So we're gonna need to cut that right at that reference point. And as you can see, you've got um, dielectric all over the center conductor. So we take our cleaners, which in this case, a pair of gators. And clean that center conductor off like so. So glad there's not voltage. And then you want to put your back nut on. Followed by the splice. You want to push it until you feel a little bit of resistance and some bounce back like that. You can probably see it. Then you want to tighten the back nut, which is sometimes easier said than done. There it is. Uh, you can take your channel locks, or if you've got, you know, adjustable wrenches, whatever, just to tighten that down. I use channel locks. Okay. And it's the same thing all around, um, which I will do, but probably won't necessarily explain from here on out. But that's how you core and splice. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this other side prepped. Always a good idea to, uh, if you've got the pillback jacket, if you can, have the cable and the knife. Consequently, uh, facing away from you. <laughs> Obvious reasons. So as you can see, whenever you do cut a bit of the shield and the dielectric away to expose that center conductor, um, so it's a little safer to core, you do score the conductor sometimes, but it's usually not a big deal because you can core back enough to where you can just, you know, cut that off. In fact, I'll have to, right?
probably a pretty good time to go ahead and cut the shrink and put it on. So this is used for sort of uh, weatherproofing, right? Uh, heat shrink, heat uh, shrink boot, whatever you want to call it. both splices I need to be greedy with it journeys into modern Okay, and before we shrink it, I need to go make sure that we've got signal at that tap. All right, looks like we have signal. So that being said, we are now clear to go ahead and just heat shrink it up and roll on. So it is pretty simple. You just want to make sure that you, there are little reference lines on this uh, heat shrink that are green, that turn brown whenever they're uh they reach an appropriate uh temperature so It's a little more difficult to shrink in a hole because that happens the flame chokes itself out um, you also want to when you're doing this make sure that you're shrinking evenly um, around it otherwise it's gonna be like misshapen and crappy looking <laughs> correctly you should notice that there is a little bit of glue coming out the end so that's really it um, like I said I might dig this a little deeper and uh, go ahead and bury it but that is how you splice a hardline cable and, uh, and heat shrink 